Hey, everybody, welcome back to the third, count them, three, uno, dos, tres episode of Astral Stew. I am one of your hosts, uh, Josh Rutledge, the humanist. It sounded like you forgot who you were, <laughs> uh, but I'm your other host, the Vich. That's two capital V's like the movie, Stefan. <laughs> you put me in a bind because you can't call yourself a guru. Like, then I not? didn't write it down. Well, there. you're not. You're not you, a guru. You're the a guru. guru. <laughs> right. Here, what if we spell it? G O O R. E W. <laughs> the the guru. Or what about like um Marvel's Guru? Guru, yeah, that would be cool. Guru. Well, yeah. every Josh, every time that we have every this Josh? show, you just have to make sure to introduce him always. So if I call you the Guru, it's okay, right? Technically, yes, but we're are we're talking about semantics, and I'm being flippant. <laughs> I will not call myself that. That's all I'm saying. Fine. You don't have to introduce <laughs> yourself as the guru. I don't I have a byline. I, I don't be, I won't introduce myself either. Man. I will be the guru. He's also a witch, so he can, <laughs> we can just we can. just switch them out. Yeah, we switch every week. You never know who's gonna get what. Right? Oh my god, we're actually like an 11, 11 personality wide panel, but you know, these are the three you got today. Yeah, so ten up here and one with John. <laughs> what if I what if I called you all the Gwitch? I'd be okay with that because it also sounds like a cool what you, anime. What you what you trying to say? <laughs> are you guru. Of, which of my people are you trying to make fun of right now? Guru, guru <laughs> and witch. Gwitch. Oh, oh, uh, I thought gay witch. Gwitch. Why well, would it wouldn't twitch. apply to Stefan then? Stefan's totally a witch. <laughs> Goblin. His <laughs> wife will confirm that. No, she said that she agrees with you that I am a sassy black woman. <laughs> Old black woman that I'm essentially oh. Medea. Medea, that's a good personality <laughs> to have. Clank, clank. So, how you fellas been? Good. good, good. It's been a month since we officially talked, but we talk all the time. So, mm. all right. So, I uh, since Stefan brought the kickoff topic last time, I wanted to know if I could bring the kickoff topic this time. Oh, you're and, asking? The answer is no. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say I didn't know about this, and so I prepared. This thing I'm about to make up. Yep. Oh. I also had something prepared uh, that has not been prepared yet. <laughs> did you use mayonnaise with it? Oh, God. Why did that <laughs> just a miracle? Just wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, my thing, and this, and you all both are actually, we've already had conversations about this. And so, um, it's yeah, it's a little cheating, but. So I was thinking the other day, I'm watching that uh, documentary, The Secret Life of Water. It's on Guy. I'm sure it's elsewhere, too. But um, it's kind of an older doc, and Stefan had been trying to get me to watch it for a long time. And one of the things that I was really thinking about in it is, have you ever noticed that uh, the Holy Trinity and water are the only two things that can exist unbroken, unbounded, in all three states of existence. So the Holy Trinity, of course, for those who are not uh, religious or Catholic or whatever, is you got God, uh, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And then, of course, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Whatever. And then you got <clears throat> water, ice, and vapor. And it's just three different states of water. And as far as we know, there's, there's no other um a chemical or anything like that that can exist like that in all three states. The mother, the maiden, and the crone. Mm -hmm. I'm the witch. I was gonna say, friend, that is very Judeo-Christian in perspective from where you're coming at. <laughs> okay, I, like I, I don't believe there that those are the only um three. Uh, yeah, I, I don't not, agree. I with get your what you're saying. I don't agree with your absolute, but I do agree with where you're trying to take it. So I, yes. so just to be clear, I did not say that those are the only three. I said that there's no other chemical, like no other thing like water that we know of. That, that has can a holy exist, trinity that can exist in all three states. Like there's no other. I've been to that little thing and there's a little metal plaque and you can stand over it and you're in all three states at once. <laughs> so again, <laughs> I can't. Okay. I get it. <laughs> well, I mean, isn't like, isn't like uh rock like, cause when it's rock, it's a technically solid, right? when it's lava, it's liquid. No. Technically it's water is lava. Oh. Technically, water is lava. The floor is fucking lava. No, no, no. Like, like a, a liquid mineral, like kind of thing. It's uh, TikTok 
has educated me. Water, <laughs> water is technically lava. Well, I'm the bus it. just went to school. So Look it up. <laughs> so, so the other thing though that I proposed today, I think, or yesterday, I don't remember, was that humans have three states as well. We have the physical state, the spiritual state, and then I threw out there the astral state, but I don't know that that is the correct third state, but I do think that we have three states. Well, uh, yeah, I guess my debate there would be spiritual and astral could be interchangeable. To me. But I guess like we would exist as strictly a spirit. We would exist as strictly physical and we would exist as strictly astral. I don't know, but maybe that's not the correct it assumption. Yeah, I don't feel like that's enough. I feel like it's being redacted just for the sake of making a tri a trigram. I, I was going to say trifecta. I you were going Zelda, man. I yeah, know. then to make the to, and to, yeah, but but that is essentially what you're doing, making making a triforce. Yeah. It's like saying everything's a duality, and then listing off the list of those. It, I don't know. It's just the now I could say the thing. physical, the astral slash spiritual, and the conscious, like your 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 thought, your your mind. What about but your I, emotions? But see, I, I would I would put spirit and consciousness together. Hmm. I don't know. So we don't have to get bogged yeah, down in thought got, on it. You just made me get this, this is going to require some meditation. Because <laughs> <laughs> because you, if you talk, if you're thinking about, well, I don't know, <clears throat> something that that came when I was doing my meditation last night. That popped into my head was um so i have twins and my wife and i often question whether or not the universe knew what it was doing when it gave us twins hmm. and so something that popped into my head um because raising twins is very difficult it, something that popped in my head though the last night is um did my daughters select my wife and i to be their parents in in the you know in the in the before so like when they were getting ready to to reincarnate or whatever did they go through a, a you know a rolodex of yeah i want this one and this one i want those to be my parents and then they came down and so if they're twins did they also pick their sister you know it's just well it's interesting because there's a there are some theorists that believe that the soul can be split as well um that some people believe that you know, maybe twins have the same soul. It's just been split, but it's a soul. So it's, it's not finite, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that potential as well, that it was just one soul that decided it wanted to have two experiences at once, possibly. Well, I wouldn't say split then I would say duplicated. Well, I don't know because the, the mm. theory that I read when, when they go back, when the, it goes back together, like, so the next life they would choose one. I guess since I feel that we're all bits of the universe carrying out our program to collect data for the whole that we're all a part of, mm -hmm. I, that seems deeper than, sorry, that sounded arrogant, but I was like, that's, that perspective seems deeper than did they just choose you? But to go backwards, I would say that if you like to use, you know, use the belief that um, we choose then that means you were chosen. Yes. If, if right. Uh, yeah. Either you were chosen or it was a fluke. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I thought they were getting the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah I right? don't know. I, yeah. I don't know if, if, if even when we reincarnate, you know, do we, if we reincarnate, but it's like, do we choose that next life or does the universe go, you know what, here's the lesson you need to learn. And it chooses. I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, or is it like a big freaking like, lottery uh bingo wheel <laughs> you know? it's just like uh b9 b you're going to b9 so yeah i mean i don't know and, and i guess it's impossible to know but uh one of the other things that came to me in a in my meditation last night i would like to know your all's thoughts on this is um when you're born does the body potentially just operate in like a um, keep the lights on mode. Yeah. So like the body has its own. I think I've talked about this before on, you know, the, the Fearscape episode stuff. And we did with John Tenney. I talked about, you know, does the body have like a firmware and then you're the operating system. And so when you're born, 
you're trying to get reacquainted with what it's like to be the operating system. So the body goes on basically autopilot and it, <clears throat> it eats, poops, sleeps for however long. And so you get maybe to like maybe around a year or a year and a half, then the operating system is comfortable enough with the new body. And so it takes over. Hmm. So. I don't know. It makes me think that when you sleep, that's when you're getting your updates. Is that- <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe or if, if you're one of those people that have died and came back to life, did you like have to power down and power back on mm. <laughs> for a reset? <laughs> so like, I'll see oh, what you did there. Now. Soft boot yourself. Soft, yeah. Soft boot. I don't know, oh, man. Making y'all think tonight. I know. Yeah. Now let's go back to the water thing. Let's like, yeah, okay. Let's talk about water. <laughs> I, I can, I can. Okay. Because you didn't get to your point. My, yeah, um, my, about the water. My, thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have multiple points about the water thing, but uh, one of them is is that, um, and I was talking about somebody the other day, but and this goes back to the whole thought around the soul and the spirit, is in the documentary, the secret uh, of of water they talk about how water has memory because they there was an experiment that was done. It was like an accident. I think somebody accidentally dropped a vial, a sealed vial of poison into a thing of water. Uh, and it was an accident, like a beaker of water. It was an accident, but it was sealed and they figured I'd get it later. So like it sat there overnight. They the next day they, they you know pulled it out and then they gave that water to some mice and the, all the mice died. And when they tested the mice, they found out that they had been poisoned because the water somehow through the little the little container of poison, even though it was sealed, the water had picked up on the essence of the poison and had become poisonous. Now, I will say that, I, you know, I've always heard that most everything is porous. So at the end of the day, like it's possible that poison could have seeped through the pores of the glass or the plastic or whatever it may Different be. Different science, same opinion as you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's, that is possible, but then the, 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 the theory that's put forth in the doc is that water knew that the vial contained poison, mm-hmm. that it had some sort of an, an intelligence to it. Like and it so, had sat in that room and seen it before, or it was able to understand. It was able it to understand it because it was amongst it. Hmm. Well, that's um, oh, well, sympathetic magic, yeah. as well as um. Oh damn it! I lost it. Eh, carry on. Sorry. <laughs> Night, nighttime pills. <laughs> no, that's okay. So, um, the other thing. So, so using that kind of thought process. Um, is it possible that uh, water, if it has some sort of an, of an intelligence uh, that we don't understand, a consciousness that we don't yet understand or can't grasp, um, could water uh, be God? Going back to that whole trinity. So you're piece. saying, in, and I'm air quoting, of course, God. So or the not, universe, not, not or... necessarily big G, right? right. But just. But 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 be so. If you talk, if you look at like um, <clears throat> a lot of the miracles uh, in the Bible, for example, and you know a lot a lot of them involve water, <clears throat> and people are made up of seventy to seventy five percent of water. Okay, yeah. So we changed water into wine. Walk on water. Yep. Uh, Jonah and the whale. Jonah, right. Well. Mm, yeah whale um, is a whale is a not is a sure creature uh, of the I was water say the, the flood of, the of gilgamesh sea, the flood yep yep so yeah i can see that um the, the i said three, gilgamesh you know what yeah. i mean yeah but the <laughs> well those the you know those those three dudes that walked around in the fire or whatever i can't have Dane, been uh, rack shack and a bend to go yeah Dad, rack, Meshack, and a <laughs> I, I don't know i just just trying to remember the veggie tales thing rack but, shack yeah. and benny yeah but this like was. you know if they had gone somehow to like a vapor state to where the fire didn't affect them, um, you know. So I'm just just spitballing here. I I like your theory of of jewel. <laughs> of jewel. <laughs> they just um, vape themselves right through that. <laughs> I um. Well, then what? My question then is: is water is is two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen, right? So if you separate them, do they lose their divinity? <gasps> well so so there's a really good interest in so so let me throw out where two or more of you are gathered (laughs) 
<laughs> you must be two parts hydrogen. Two parts hydrogen. Well, so it's interesting there that water, water, the water has, you know, a three state, uh, and it's mm -hmm. also made up of three molecules, right? Mm -hmm. So there's definitely uh, threes there in something. Yeah, but there are more than three phases of matter. I mean, I like it, but it feels like we're reaching with numerology here. Plus, it's really fucking Earth and human centric to think that water is special. Like, right. yes, because we evolved that way. It's the same reason that we think carbon based life forms are the shit because we are. But yeah, it doesn't mean that that's the only <laughs> <laughs> the only so, stuff out there. So I'm not saying that that water is the only stuff out there. I'm just saying that could life on this planet have been engineered by water. Does water have a consciousness that it, we don't yet understand? If also, we did come from primordial ooze, right? Yeah, I so like, I guess from the ooze we all came. If you're getting into some Mormon consciousness where everyone has their own planet and they create their own planet, then yes, the person that created this planet was made of water. <laughs> I mean, I feel, I feel like you guys are mocking me here, but I'm, I'm not, what a, <laughs> I am. Mocking. I, I just, am. I think some of, I think the point of some of it is, is that yes, it's kind of limited in that regards that we have a very universal view, all three of us. So to, again, like Santosh was saying to, to think that water is what is the most important essentially, which is what a God that created us would be made of has to assume then that God created the entire universe, we then would then have to be selfish enough to say, yes, then that means water is what is the most important, right? I got uh, one after you. Hold on. No, you stop. You good, Stefan? Yep. Okay. And then considering that like per current modern science, our, the chemicals that make us up were the chemicals that were blown apart from the stars, you know, like the Big Bang entropy la 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 right why why are you so hung up on hydrogen and oxygen molecules when we have stardust in us well what is the most abundant uh molecule in the galaxy and the in the universe that we've been able to measure Jeez. hydrogen hydrogen cheese is not know. the answer Stephen. <laughs> I just like geez. so so I so now oh are you trying to win me in your camp? I'm like yes it is water but only because of the hydrogen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so only <laughs> two god particles mixed in. Right. I so mean, if you don't have the third god particle. <laughs> so the two most abundance are hydrogen and helium, and that's what gets burned early on in a star before it starts burning and or making Hindenburg and making other making other elements that then go into the building blocks of life and so on and so forth. So um yeah. Uh, I don't know. I do I do find it interesting that uh the two things uh that very much requ we require to live are water and air and both have oxygen. I feel like people are too much of a fucking ox sorry I'm cussing an oxygen fan. Everybody's like oxygen oxygen like it's not, uh, I know it gets broken down in our blood, but it ain't all that. Oxidizing gives you wrinkles. Like, you know, <laughs> I don't turns, know. Your, turns, your, turns your pennies turquoise. I mean, come on. I, I just, it, like, I, I just can't vibe behind this one molecular structure is, I, holds the answer. But I it, do agree with you that water takes on and can be programmed and is fundamental within it all but yeah i think at the end of the day is do we do we answer the question is water divine right is is that what the the boiled down question no is? so that's not my boiled down question my boiled down question if you really want to boil it down all puns intended is that <laughs> oh let's go let's go we're knee deep in this is is <laughs> water does does water have consciousness we we think of consciousness in like physical forms. No, I don't. Well, you like, don't. <laughs> but, but the vast majority of people think of like. Is it thinks it's exclusive to sentient beings. Right. But could water have consciousness? OK, well, let me break this down then. Let's get to a, a microbiological aspect here that there are many microorganisms that exist in water. I mean, billions in just a spoonful. Right. Yep. If their collective consciousness is is inside that water, is it indeed the water that has consciousness or these microorganisms, right? Has that been measured? Well, let me ask you this. Do you believe the earth has consciousness? Yes. 
Does the Earth have consciousness because all the people on it have consciousness? Yes, and the other one too. So there you go. There's your answer about water. Mm. So yeah, because no. I think so. Because I mean, it's like I, I, I don't think we have anything that can strain out the microorganisms out of the water. I feel like our mythological roots are would be more bound to it as a food source, and that. It, cities sprung up around waterways because of just because of our evolution i i think that consciousness is makes up everything so because like it, i mean to throw out some yogic philosophy you've got the two primal essences uh like of the duality when you break it down or awareness like and um energy or motion and it takes both of them together so the different forms from from motion we get everything or energy shakti mm -hmm. but vibration i mean most of our science is pointing to it right now that a lot of what makes up everything is just vibration frequency and yeah other stuff too but you know what i mean like since we're being reductive so so along that line if um if everything let me make sure I, I say this right. Are you? Is it everything has consciousness, or consciousness is mm -hmm. makes everything? Like which is the correct statement? Because they're yeah. not the, they're not equal. No, no, they're not. Um, and just because it's made up of consciousness does not mean that it has awareness mm. uh, in and of itself. But what you what you think it's going to be like when you're reincarnated as a rock? Well, I, I will come back as The Rock. <laughs> the Rock. And is he the whole the movie? Joan? I want him to be the new Joan of Arc. So like all these new witches coming up and everything. And it's like, I in a past life, I was The Rock. I was The Rock. It's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. I'm going to go for Ric Flair in my third lifetime from now. I'm going to be like, I was once Ric Flair. <laughs> right now, Sophia's but hair looks like Ric Flair's. <laughs> But yeah, but also think about like there are certain lifestyles, uh, lifestyles, life cycles, like even the life cycle of, of the rock in and of itself is so long and spread out that we we haven't devoted enough generations to studying like well, how everything goes, goes down. And so that's where I wanted I wanted to go next was kind of taking that. I, I heard something this week that said that. um that like trees because they exist and i think this might have been in the uh art of dreaming so i i'm hoping i'm not uh cop you know copyright material here but um <clears throat> but trees because they exist for so long that they're they take a long time to think about answers to questions and we kind of yeah, get sounds like tree beard, right? So know. we get a little hint of that in, in Lord of the Rings, Lord right? The Rings, with tree beards. Yeah. And so if water has been around for millennia, could its thought process take just? It, it could, but I, I I see water moves quicker though. You know what I mean? Well, it's like trees. Water, water flow. <clears throat> water flows, right? Well, not only does There's it a, flow, but it's constantly <clears throat> evaporating, and it comes back down. It takes form. It regathers. It. So there's a really fun um, sci-fi series, uh, the Iron Druid Chronicles, and I adored them. And they were talking about like how and this the Druids make contact with like Gaia, but that's a very extremely and uh, difficult and drawn out process to stir up that big and that old of an energy um, but you can also make relationships with like the tectonic plates and then the geographical areas themselves like a, like the spirit of a desert and then various lesser beings beyond that hmm. like plant deities things like that but yeah like I thought that was interesting that they're they all have their own thing it's all sort of part of that Gaia consciousness but you're only talking to like Colorado and the spirit of that at one point, or, you know, the Sahara as its well, own spirit. So why, so I guess in my own form, I'd be like, yeah, cause bodies of water can become pretty damn sentient and interactive. Like think of all the myths and, and ponds, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Well, that's what I'd, I'd ask you all. Cause you know, I've not done a lot of these, but are rituals that involve or near water, are they more, are they more, 
powerful is for lack of a better term depends on who's working the stuff yeah or what the intent of and and what their associations are with that particular body water water or the element of water as in a a a sentient sentient expression of that of the essence of water and you know what kind Which of can control be- are you talking about wiccan you're talking about yogic you're talking about this or that because you look at man what's one place people like to freaking get married by which is a ritual is water well you know. th- think think about india and the the ganges river oh yeah like that's holy everything. that's a holy river part of three holy rivers and yeah there are certain times to go in and do and it is you know it was channeled like the the goddess of that of of the river was channeled through the locks of Shiva's hair. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I will shoot back to. So your, yeah, those your, would be more, that specific type of water would have more oomph to those practitioners. Yeah. And I will shoot back to your God analogy. there, getting Judeo Christian. It's like, yeah, baptism. There's something it's like, you know, like that was this connection to God. Like, I mean, here's Jesus. Who's the son of God yet still needed water dunked or sprinkled on him like to have that true connection with god so it, it, it is a very interesting concept coming from a strictly in my opinion judeo-christian yeah uh viewpoint uh i yeah I, I really see some some uh similarities there you know with water and um you know especially looking at it with consciousness and the, the three states and and things like that um it's a very very interesting concept to look at from a um very open judeo-christian viewpoint so yep so <clears throat> that's all i got anybody else got anything else <laughs> whoa no. i mean you know whoa, just just drop that little nugget. Well, no, I mean, I want to add to that just in case people don't know a really great documentary for everyone to watch. If they haven't yet is what the bleep do we know? And of course they get in there to um, uh, what's his name? Dr. Mas- Masui Mas- Mas- Emoto. Emoto. That's his name. I can't remember his first name, but yeah, Emoto, he talks about water crystals and emotions. And yeah. so there's something we do know based off of his research and stuff like that, that water can indeed take on emotions um, yeah your vibe the water crystals were able to reflect very beautiful kind you know beautiful water crystals when they were happy if you you know had wonderful things towards it but because when they were of angry the structure sad, the molecular structure <laughs> yeah that that they were violent looking and crazy which of course reminds me of ghostbusters too with the slime right, <laughs> right? yeah <laughs> So, but yeah, I mean, you know, so does it have consciousness? Well, what is exactly consciousness is really the question at the end of the day, right? Um, Because it's just like, you know, Santosh said, consciousness does not mean sentience, you know? So what is consciousness? Just being alive? Then yes, it it absolutely is alive in my opinion. Hmm. But is it divine? Does it have sentience? Can can it think? Can Can it speak? Can it communicate? Those are... Harder. Well, you know, well, hold on maybe, hold, for maybe. a second, because I'm I'm about to spiral off, and I'll forget this. Um, although, you know, I don't think I've ever sat down and done a ritual to invoke water. Mm-mm. I think because of my associations, pagan wise, have put it like elemental. These are forces that you work with, but mm-hmm. you bargain with them. You know, eh, bargain for lack yeah. of a better term. And hmm, yeah, I don't try. think I ever have either. But yeah, so, that's a really interesting idea. So along those lines, you know, one of the things that I proposed was, was Jesus able to walk on water because he asked water to support his weight? Well, if water's God, he's the son of water. Right. So he just asked his dad to walk on him. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, Or if, you know, Jesus is also God, he just walked on himself. Right. So maybe he knew about surface tension and nobody mentions his ridiculously large sandals (laughs) that he used to get out there. Or the fact that the Dead Sea has... So much salt in so it. much salt. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, so the somebody other out there is, thinking they're gonna drown is like, just relax, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> You've got like no, body like, fat to keep you safe. Well, and just, remember when the apostles were like, I'm gonna step out and I'm gonna do it, and he starts to sink, and Jesus is basically like, No, believe what he was really saying was relax, it's salty as shit, you'll float, <laughs> right? <laughs> so one of the things I wanted to say to Stefan while ago, you said if, does consciousness uh can you be have consciousness and not be sentient because you can't talk or speak or communicate and i would argue that trees can communicate to other trees we don't understand what the trees are saying mm-hmm. but they can still communicate so therefore they should they have sentience right I well they they 
quite often send signals back and forth through the mycelial network. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and, well, and so I'm, then, I'm, then, then it's like, well, been. yeah, are we talking about mushroom consciousness, which is a whole lot more pervasive and, yeah. and, and, but I think it's just one of these, I think that's why it gets to be one of like the big four water, fire, um, air and earth. And let's just call them the big common four nowadays. Yeah. Um, think about them. Each of them could be argued what you're saying yeah. and the way it's yeah. used. And fi- fire is worshiped still to this day. Yeah. And, you know, like there's still rituals around that and um, air. You're not getting pretty far without that, are you? No, especially if you want wrinkles because you oxygenate. Right, because you oxygenated oxygenate. yourself. This ain't no OxyClean. <laughs> no, no, it ain't. No, it ain't. I'm a Taurus, so don't forget Earth, okay? <laughs> don't forget Earth. Don't, don't, don't forget. Don't forget. Well, and there are plenty of Earth worshippers around, so that one's not so, lacking for love. So, do like do like trees and stuff? Do they fall underneath Earth? Yeah, I, I don't know. So. Unless you're in that one of those um, systems where wood is an element. Oh wood. yeah, I have seen that too. Yeah, where wood. That's a breakdown element. that's just as valid for some other people. It starts to get to a point where you're starting to look at different types of Pokemon to really start to see like <laughs> what elements there are in the world. Because right. like there used to be like three types of Pokemon or four. Now there's like 48, and you're like, wait, what? Right. You could say you're inviting the Eevee squad along, and that could be up to 50 more. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who even knows? Right. <laughs> Aluminum is now an element well it is an element but it is uh its own to be worshipped the illuminati right, right. right. yeah the illuminati the illuminati we, we talk about you can get that shirt on fierce <laughs> yeah com slash store um and we said with alan greenfield that the uh the british call it the aluminati aluminati <laughs> That's some foil hat people. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I like know. our little foil hat discussions. Yes, me too. I, but yeah, Josh, that's all really great food for fodder. You know what I mean? It's like, it's really great stuff to think about. Um, and some of it is, it, it, you know, and a lot of what we end up doing is we do, we play devil's advocate, um, you know, things like that. Another Judeo Christian thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, yeah, anything is. I, I, you know, and I, th- I think if if I could say anything that Santosh would teach constantly is it's all about intent. <laughs> no matter what it is, it's about intent. Like you know, I've noticed that when you've asked questions about magic and about um, manifestation and things like that, really it boils down to what's your intent. Yeah. Right. And so. And the effort that you put into it. Exactly. And so you know, I mean, you think about holy water. You know, is it truly blessed? Yes, I think so. I think it's just another form of, of spell work. It's, it's a magic spell, but from a priest. And they've now made this water divine, so to speak. It killed vampires. <laughs> and the classic old discussion of what is the cube, what is the volume of water that is blessed by a priest when they bless? Yeah, I've always said, why don't y'all just bless the sea and then we're good forever? Right. Like, well, hold on. They've already blessed the rains down in Africa. So I think we should sort of <laughs> get the seas blessed as well. And that's well, what I was saying. Can they bless a lake? And then if it goes up in rain and comes back down, is it still blessed or does it like if it goes right? into. Can you evaporate blessing? Right. So could you like put a, a thing of holy water in a pan, boil it and breathe it in when you're sick? Like, and would that heal your, could your you, lungs? Could you put it in? Could you put it into a still and distill it down so you have more potent blessing? That's well, already I mean, what. That's well, here, already what sacramental like an wine eye drop, is. like an eyedropper. Uh, <laughs> well, so so I'm, so here's I'm gonna give it to you like this. They blessed <laughs> they blessed water a thousand years ago, right? We're gonna say yeah. they blessed water a thousand years ago. That water has since traveled to every person who's ever lived on the fa- face of the planet. Mm. So if it never loses its blessing, all you really need to do is bless it once. And now all water is blessed and all water that ever will be is blessed. That's what I'm blessed. Saying. And it goes through you and yep. we know water world, your pee turns back into water. So <laughs> it's still holy water, but I'll say it gets back to intent, right? Because it is not only the intent of the priest blessing the water, but it is the intent of the recipient to accept that the water is blessed. 
Yep. Yes, in the way that um, quartz crystals will accept programming more easier than others with different associations mm -hmm. put on them. Well, and it very much reminds me of the Anita Blake Vampire Hunter books where they were talking about, no, it's not just a cross that can destroy, you know, hurt a vampire. It's anyone's belief. Yeah, it's their, like it's her faith. It's not her jewelry. Like, can go up. An atheist, could, they just themselves could be fucking bright, you know. <laughs> it's like it's yeah. all about intent. So, so. There we go. Our third episode of Astral Stew. We talked about consciousness, the consciousness of elements. And what we boiled all the way down to is that it's all about intent and, and belches. And, apparently. And, and don't forget, your, your, your girls did choose you in their past life. Like they choose Jif. Jif? Choose, yeah, it's choosy. Moms. Choosy moms choose Jif. Choosy yeah, but souls. choosy choose. twins, <laughs> choosy twins choose Josh. Aww. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to put that on a shirt. <laughs> I'm sure it'll sell one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of Josh's with twins, I'm sure. <laughs> a very popular name. So, all right. You guys, anything that you wanted to say before we wrap up here? Uh, I know I sounded like an asshole tonight. I'm sorry, people listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> no just the no. standard josh you know you know make sure to keep supporting you know everything fearscape media network it's super important to us we love you guys. smash so them much. buttons like smash subscribe buttons. comment <laughs> yep share share add us to a playlist maybe <laughs> so <clears throat> but um so i did one other thing and i think that uh one more guy